Graham Talk. I am Michael Graham. Yes, he's back. After the demise of WTKK cost him his job, conservative yacker Michael Graham now has a new home. We finally have a place where we can talk and tell the truth. It's Boston Herald Radio. That's Boston Herald as in the newspaper. On four consecutive front pages this week, the scrappy tabloids celebrated its launch of an internet talk radio station. Starting Monday, the Herald will web stream 12 hours of live talk daily, featuring Graham and fellow conservative Jeff Katz. Well, who are we kidding? The scandals are all to the left of us. Former Springfield TV anchor Jacqueline Cashman teams up with Herald reporter Hillary Chabot midday followed by sports in the afternoon. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to come out of the mouth of one Jen Royal. The Herald's move follows the Boston Globe's launch last year of its music streaming channel, Radio BDC. We are Radio BDC. With the newspaper industry in transition, pundits say the push into radio makes sense. Radio can deliver to newspapers a younger, vibrant audience. And at the same time, radio, live radio, on the Boston Herald website, turns that website live and local. But while music may bring that younger audience, that hasn't been the case with the talk format. The audience really is aging. You're dealing with a format that, by and large, attracts people over 50 who are overwhelmingly white, who are overwhelmingly male. Plus, there's the toxic talk issue. Raw Talk Radio, minus the PC and FCC. By moving into a genre that thrives on provocation, the Herald may be getting more than it's bargaining for. So I guess at the outset, we should offer something in the way of a disclaimer. Since all of us have an affiliation with WGBH, we could be construed as direct or indirect competitors with Boston Herald Radio. Um, My big question hearing about this development is what's going to happen when Howie Carr's contract with WRKO is up? And is there any way that the Herald could get him to do radio for them instead of WRKO? He's made no secret of his intense dislike for Entercom. But that being said, my hunch is that Entercom is going to be able to pay him quite a bit more than the Herald does. So I feel like if the Herald could pull him into their fold of Uh, radio talent, maybe this thing would be viable because he's so key for Herald readership. But if not, I have my doubts. Well, I mean, the thing with Howie is if Entercom is still interested in having a talk radio station, then they're going to pay Howie Carr more than I would think that an online radio operation would pay him. Because the thing about online radio is it's, it's a very interesting and promising development. But right now, we're still at the stage where, you know, what's in the future, we'll all be famous to 15 people. I mean, that's what online radio is, is all about. I mean, not tons of listeners. Yeah, sure. it's, it's very few listeners. The other thing is talk radio in particular is something that people listen to in their car. And it's not that difficult to listen to Internet radio in your car, but not very many people do. And especially this basic talk radio audience that is older, uh, not as likely to be listening to Internet radio on their smartphones as a younger audience would be, uh, this seems to me a pretty steep challenge that the Herald has set for itself. Hmm. I mean, I think, you know, Dan, you're right in the sense that younger people are more likely to sit with their iPhones in the passenger seat streaming whatever they're interested in, right? So they might be living here, but maybe they're streaming WNYC out of New York, or right? Or maybe they're streaming KQED out of San Francisco because they just like what they have on at that moment, or they move from San Francisco or whatever. But the... So that's that's the good thing for for not being on the dial. You don't have to be on the dial. But I think you're right. Being not on the dial is a hindrance. The other thing is when you're not on the dial, you're competing with everybody. You're competing with WNYC and KQED. And, I mean, one thing I've learned about being in radio is you don't just throw it on the air. I mean, it is actually very hard to put together radio. And I think they're thinking, you know, people just spend a couple hours a day and they'll also be writing for the Herald. That That's tough. I mean, I don't know how much money they're going to put into production. But when you're competing with everybody, that's a big field to compete with. I mean, that, I think that's one of the things may, they may not realize. Well, it it may be a good thing for them that there's no real business model for this kind of thing, because if there were a business model, I don't think that they would meet the test. Um, The Internet radio is something we really don't know much about in terms of uh, what kind of income you're going to get from it, if any. And certainly it's not the old old way of selling advertising to to prove that your product has value. 
Um, after years and years of the newspaper business, I have a hard time thinking of bringing the staff and putting them on radio. Just it's been too long. You know, present company excluded. It is a very difficult thing, I think, for people who aren't always in TV and radio. Present company like the whole beat the beat the press crew. To, to come and be on the air and offer their opinions when their real job is not to offer their opinions, it's to report. Yeah, I mean, anything that creates jobs in this climate and that potentially promises hope of salvaging the print side of the business is, is good news. So I, w I certainly wish them well in that regard. But I agree with everything that's been said here. They're coming into a tough spot competitively. The timing seems off. Right-wing talk radio has been struggling in this market in recent years, not thriving the way it once did. Uh, and as Kara points out, when you're on the web, you're not only competing with those out-of-town stations. Well, first of all, they're competing with uh, Michael Graham, who's probably their biggest initial yeah. draw, is competing with Rush Limbaugh. That's a tough road to hoe. And, and um, Ingram and John Handy and, and anybody any else. Any of the big national yeah. names you can get online uh, at uh, at various times. So it's just it's going to be an uphill climb. So then it becomes a question of do people who are listening want national conservative talk, or do they want outrage over? alleged or real EBT abuses, for example, here in Massachusetts. And if they're looking for that, there aren't that many places to well, go. Well, local, do, local is the one advantage that, the, that they'll bring to the table here. Uh, local, it is tied in with the Herald reporting. So if people are looking for uh, more local, that does give them an advantage. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and then I think that's the question. How big a market is there for local reporting? done from right wing and maybe with kind of a low production sort of you know very bare bones production staff well maybe there's a market maybe not yeah, who knows we'll find out yeah. soon